escort town through. We got multiple people down. We need a lot of ambulance. November 7, 2018, Thousand Oaks, California. Twelve people gunned down in one of the safest cities in America. And what goes through your mind in that moment? Our entire world, obviously, like turned upside down. And I just got to get out. I just got to find my brother. I wanted to tell him, oh my gosh, like, do you know how bad this is? Hours later, fires rage, and the victim's stories are largely left untold. It looked like Armageddon outside. Well, open up your mind and see like me. As months open pass, the community coming together to heal. And we just hugged them and we kissed them. A lot of times it takes tragedy to bring us to, uh, together. It just shows the power of the human spirit to prevail. This is a Fox 11 News special report, Borderline, one year later. Welcome to the Borderline. A year after the shooting here, the bar and grill remains closed. Its future is uncertain, but a memorial here remains. I'm Alex Michelson. Over the course of the next half hour, we're going to celebrate the 12 lives lost here and tell their stories, many of which you've probably never heard before. But we begin with a celebration of this place, a place that means so much to so many in this close-knit community. Since 1993, the Borderline has been a go-to place in Thousand Oaks for live music. You bring the drinks, I crank the tunes. Line dancing, beer pong tournaments, games, and every Wednesday, college country night. I was at class and um, came straight from class to country night. Victoria Rose Meek worked at the Borderline with her brother Justin. Welcome to Borderline! He headed promotions at the bar while studying at nearby Cal Lutheran University. She took this photo of him that night. I remember making a mental note to myself of how happy Justin was. Shortly after recording this video, Victoria Rose went to a different part of the club. I was dancing in the front and remember turning around and seeing him. And next thing I knew, I just heard pop, pop, pop. <laughs> Growing up in a military family, I have shotguns. I knew exactly what it was. And I just crouched down and just started like running for an exit. And everyone just started running like crazy. She was out, but she couldn't find Justin. I was just in this tunnel vision. I just got to get out. I just got to find my brother. Just before those shots rang out, Karen Helis was on the phone with her husband, Ron, a 29-year law enforcement veteran and sergeant with Ventura County Sheriff's Department. We spoke with Karen and her son, Jordan. And I told him I loved him. And that was the last time I actually talked to him. This one goes through to 245. In progress at the borderline. Using a police scanner app on her phone, Karen listened in to what was happening in real time. I heard his call sign and then I listened and it was pretty intense. That call sign identifying Ron for Sam 3. There's a subject inside shooting. Arrive parked to the west, bring your rifle. And you're sitting there and you're listening to this and you know that he's really right hopeless. there. <laughs> really hopeless. Like, because I wanted to tell him, oh my gosh, like, do you know how bad this is? Like, and I know he did, but he went in anyway. Force down three, we got multiple people down. We need a lot of ambulance. Down three, at least five down inside. And then did you hear somebody say, officer down? It took forever. I was yelling at the phone, and I was like, please say something, Ron. I mean, I don't, are you there? What, what's going on? I mean, I, I just need to hear one word, just one word. 4Sam3 is down and unresponsive at the south entrance. Then when I heard one of the officers say, 4Sam3 is down and unresponsive, I think I went to my knees and just couldn't believe I was hearing that. Like, no. There has been a mass shooting in Thousand Oaks. There was a guy and he just started shooting. I heard everybody scream, get down. I ran off the dance floor. Get out of there. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Michael Morrison's daughter, Christina, was a hostess at Borderline that night. The fun-loving 20-year-old adored by her friends and family. How do you find out that, there, that something's happening at the Borderline? I wound up going downstairs because someone was banging on the door, and it was Christina's best friend. <laughs> Sorry. And all of us knew that Christina wasn't answering her phone. 
Across town, Gladys Monrique Kozak was also watching the news, concerned that her brother Daniel may have been at the bar. I got a call from my dad, and I just said, please don't tell me that he was there. And he said he, he was, and he broke down crying, and I collapsed onto my bedroom floor. Um, I still very vividly remember that moment. Um, I think it was the moment that our entire world obviously like turned upside down. Text messages show Daniel arriving at the borderline less than five minutes before the shooting began. These are our brothers and sisters. Daniel was a retired Marine who worked at Team Red, White and Blue, an organization that helps vets who are struggling to transition back to civilian life. Ironically, Daniel was killed that night by a fellow vet. Dan would have been so upset that he had not reached him yet. Given his heart of service, I really feel like he would have focused on that. Like, what could I have done? Mm. How could I have reached out to him? Other families began to gather at the Thousand Oaks Teen Center. We've been seeing family, friends, loved ones uh, coming here. The father of Cody Gifford Kaufman was one of the first to receive the devastating news that his 22-year-old son had been murdered. My firstborn son. Only him and I know how much I love, how much I miss him. Oh, God. Cody was an athlete, umpire, and big brother who was planning to go into the Army. To say he is gone, I don't believe it. He shielded four young women under a table during the shooting, saving their lives. There were so many heroes that night. Sean Adler, age 48, was a security guard who tried to stop the gunman at the front door. The father, husband, and former high school wrestling coach also owned the Rivalry Roasters coffee shop in Simi Valley. Another hero, a man known as Tell, Telemachus Orfanos, a Navy veteran. He survived the Route 91 shooting in Las Vegas just the year before. My son was in Las Vegas with a lot of his friends and he came home. He didn't come home last night. That's one door, he's coming out this door. At Borderline, Tell actually made it out of the bar, but went back in to help. Justin Meek was still inside helping others. Justin went to um, one of the windows and grabbed one of the bar stools and broke the window and started getting people out. And um, it sounds like he was the last one out um, trying to trying to get out and was shielding people, like basically using his big body um, as angel wings almost. Twelve lives taken too soon. Shall I stay? Elena Housley, age 18. She earned an academic scholarship to Pepperdine University, played four instruments, and loved to sing. falling in love with Oh, sweet Elena. Elena, honored by her aunt, Tamara Mowry Housley, on The Real. I don't think I'll ever move on with the fact that she's not here with me. 20-year-old Marky Meza Jr. was a songwriter who attended Carpinteria High School. He had only recently started working at the borderline. Blake Dingman was at the bar with his buddy Jake Dunham. They were both known for their signature tagline, Holder Why, because they loved living life full throttle. Baseball, motocross, trucks, riding, anything fast, in the desert or on the lake. Moorpark College student Noelle Sparks was only 21, but had already built a life of service at Calvary Community Church in Westlake Village. She loved teaching kids, playing cello, and country line dancing. As their families were notified at the teen center, the Morissettes waited anxiously. We had sat for, for nine hours. Somebody finally came to us and said, let's go to the next, let's go to another room, we'll sit, we'll talk. Um, said that Christina was deceased. She was, she was shot and um, she was killed instantly. And what goes through your mind in that moment? <sighs> at that time, everything is just like, I don't know, it was like a scene from a movie inside my head. Everything just happened all at once, you know. We, we all just broke out in tears. Christina was the final victim to be identified. Ron Helis was the first. Sergeant Helis died at the, ah. 
The sergeant passed away at the hospital uh, about an hour. Karen Helis and her son Jordan were in the hospital when Ron officially lost his life. Actions speak louder than words, and unfortunately, he didn't make it out that night, but he wouldn't have had it any other way. Immediately, the community came together for a procession. It was um, overwhelming to see that many people over, over the on-ramps and off -ramps. Freeway overpasses, <laughs> right? The freeway overpasses. It was. We just couldn't get over the amount of love there was out there yeah. and kindness, compassion. Sergeant Ron Hila served 29 years with the department and died in line of duty as a true hero. Coming up next, just when everyone thought this horrible day couldn't get any worse. I look to my left and we're exiting our neighborhood and it's like up in flames. It did. It sort of felt like Armageddon. It looked like Armageddon outside. When Borderline, one year later, continues. Thousand Oaks, November 8th, 2018. Heartbreak turns to panic as a fire breaks out right in the middle of the first borderline vigil. The power lines are down. We saw every single Ventura County Fire Department unit leave the scene of this mass shooting. There's a fire in that area as well. People are coming out to fight this fire. Most of the news reporters immediately move from the shooting coverage. We've had two major stories, massive news stories today. To fire coverage. So he said fighting it in this wind-driven fire was pointless. Leaving the stories of the borderline victims mostly untold. The Woolsey fire would burn 151 square miles, kill three people, destroy 1,600 structures, and cause as much as $5 billion in damage. It looked like Armageddon outside, and it truly, I think, looked outside like we all felt on the inside, like everything had been completely turned upside down. I looked to my left, and we're exiting our neighborhood, and it's like up in flames. And I'm like, oh my god. So we like call all of our friends at our house. We were just like, we don't care about any of our stuff. Like I said, pack up Justin's room, pack up the music room, all of his instruments, pack up all of his stuff. We don't care about all of our stuff. We're driving around the cemetery looking for a plot while the hills are completely on fire and water drops are happening just thinking like what has life become in the last few days in the midst of it all families trying to make sense of what had happened it seemed like it went on for weeks michael morrison was approached by a co-worker of his daughter another hostess who had gone home sick that night right before the shooting began she came to me and she felt like it was her fault <laughs> that Christina was gone because she should have been there instead. And I told her that's not, that's not her fault, you know. I, I tried to tell her. Karen Helis had to have a similar difficult conversation after the investigation revealed that the bullet that killed Ron came from friendly fire, a fellow officer. So um, it happens all the time. It wasn't meant for him. Um, I know that I've talked to the officer well, nothing's changed, mm -hmm. really. I mean, he was doing his job, too. Thousands gathered to mourn Ron as a hero. Maybe God wants to use Ron to help heal us. That word, hero, used often to describe the 12 lost at Borderline in a series of emotional memorial services. I once was lost. You will live on through all of the beautiful memories and moments we've shared. With the love and support from all you, it's going to make it 10 times easier. It has really felt like the community is like sort of holding all 12 families in the time when we've needed it the most. We'll open up your mind and see he like me. Coming up, celebrities and even the president Hard to believe, isn't it? come to the area to help the healing begin when Borderline, one year later, continues. Listen to the music of the moment people dance and sing. We're just one big family. Jason Morass is among the many celebrities using their talents to help the victims of the borderline shooting. Jason's such a great guy. He got back to me right away. Two minutes, two minutes later, he responded to my email and said he absolutely would be a part of it. Musician and producer Michael Blue made calls from his Thousand Oaks recording studio called Revolver 
to put together a special concert series called Music Strong. Lucky I'm in love with my best friend. It features Jason Mraz, Colby Kaye, Rita Wilson, and Rick Springfield. I really feel that we did bring a little bit of comfort just for, you know, a couple of hours that night. Whatever you want. John Bryan helped organize it all. Seeing the 12 family members represented in the audience, for them to actually be dancing and crying and laughing all in one big emotion. It was John who reached out to us at Fox 11 with the idea for this special. He plans to shoot his own documentary to honor the 12 families. Help, hope, and healing for Music Strong is what we're all about. There's no way we can fix it, but we can surely help. Stars like Trace Atkins, Jimmy Allen, Cassidy Pope from the Academy of Country Music performed at a borderline strong benefit concert. People in the music industry, their gift is their talent and, and they wanted to share it with us. Hey everyone, Jared Goff here with the LA Rams. Rams quarterback Jared Goff joined Major League Baseball stars and area locals Ryan Braun and Christian Yelich to create California Strong. We grew up in these areas, we frequent in these places, we were a part of this community. They organized a Thanksgiving dinner and a celebrity softball game that raised over a million dollars. What does California Strong, what does that phrase mean to you? It's just us coming together right now. A lot of times it takes tragedy to bring us to, uh, together. It just shows the power of the human spirit to prevail. Oh, say can you see? During a Monday night football game against the Kansas City Chiefs, the Rams gave free tickets to first responders and victims. Now, L.A. together. Karen and Jordan Helis lit the torch. Light the torch! And spent time with the players. <laughs> They're local, too. It affected them as well. You know, right now we're playing a football game and, and won a game that hopefully brings joy to a community that needs it. You don't see what's going on until you come here. I was with the President of the United States as he came to Southern California to meet with those impacted by the wildfires and the shooting. Before taking off in Air Force One, the president taking time here to meet with victims of the borderline shooting, that meeting happening behind closed doors. Did you meet with him? We did. What did he say to you? Wow, that was such an honor that he would even want to meet with us, but there was so much compassion. We just hugged him and we kissed him and everybody, and, and it was very warm. Local businesses and community organizations pitched in too. We all support each other in this small community. Altogether, over $3.6 million raised and distributed to survivors. The city of Thousand Oaks has installed a permanent memorial here at the Conejo Creek North Park. Behind us, 12 water jets for each of the victims. There are also 12 granite benches here. This is a healing garden where people can come to reflect and remember. There are other tributes, including this one at the Pony Baseball Field in Newberry Park, where Blake Dingman played his heart out and a flagpole on the campus of Cal Lutheran University where Justin Meek played water polo. How the community came together, right? And it was just, everyone was there. Everyone wanted to help. People all over the world, they're opening up. Up next, an emotional tribute to those lost at the borderline, sung by Justin Meek himself. So we end where we began here at the borderline celebrating the 12 lives lost. And we get some help from one of them. Justin Meek was not only an employee here, he also was a musician. So here he is with the Cal Lutheran Choir singing a song called, I Love You. We can learn something from the whole circle of 12. Here's my best friend.
don't look at them as, as just a victim. You know, they're, they're people um, and they still are and their memory is gonna live on forever, but it's up to us to continue to talk about them. Oh, yeah.